I've been working with children with mental health challenges for a long time, like 30 years, but in the last dozen or so, I've been the director of working at this program called the Three Rivers Program. About 20 years ago, the state decided that it was, it was not right for children under 12 to grow up in hospitals. That just wasn't a good childhood that they wanted to support, even though there obviously were reasons why it was happening. And um, so they opened these two programs, they called clinically intensive residential treatment programs, um, to take the kids um, who had been living long term in hospitals and have a more community homey kind of life. And um, so we take kids that, if you imagine a children's psych unit has kids um, and they discharge some of them back to their homes or back to foster homes or even to residential treatment programs, but the kids that really aren't safe enough to go to any of those places that would in the past have stayed in the hospital now come to us. So we take these guys, boys and girls, ages 6 to 12, and um, typically, you know, they're not going to come to us if they had a problem that could be solved if they just took the right medicine or, um, you know, if something sort of, if everyone really understood what was going on. Um, if someone has in their childhood a very scary, horrible event and it's an isolated thing and people gather around that kid and, and take care of them, they're not going to end up in my program. It's kids who have probably a combination of some kind of genetic mental health thing along with some kind of ongoing scary stuff in their childhood. One way that we understand trauma is that you have this scary thing happen, maybe over and over, routinely, or one really big one, or whatever, and um, it becomes associated with all the things that were happening at that time. And they say in the field, neurons that fire together, wire together. So they become associated. So my relationship with, say, men with beards becomes broken. My relationship with a certain time of day, or a certain time of the season, or a certain holiday, or certain feelings, like um, I'm embarrassed. Let's say schoolwork is hard for me and I get embarrassed. And that feeling goes into the association of feeling utterly humiliated or shamed. And so all these relationships with school, relationships with certain kinds of people, relationships with certain times of day, they all get broken. They all get sort of um, damaged and shattered. Um, one of the things that um, I have always found really kind of uplifting about, which is an otherwise kind of depressing field to work, is even though everything, even though the kids have all this, you know, pain in their hearts and, you know, fear and all that and, and misbehaviors and they, you know, destroying all their relationships and everything, they are still have all this vitality. They still love to have fun. They still want to go ride their bikes and they still want to play. Um, a lot of programs, um, I believe almost all programs nowadays don't, um, don't encourage touch between or don't allow touch between the kids and the staff because um, they're very concerned about it being misunderstood. My whole program, and myself included, feel like we can't do our job without it. That the kids need to be touched to feel those things that people feel from embraces. So they get lots of hugs, and um, we try to do them in public. We try to do them, you know, in the right mood. But they they get a lot of touch where we are. The challenges that they encounter and move through. These people are so much stronger than I ever want to have to be, and I do feel in some ways that the whole thing is going the other way around for me, that I'm actually feel like I'm going to work to learn how to be like that.